Hey everybody, it's Emily the Crazy Worm Lady. I'm finally here for the 19th annual Vermiculture Conference recap. I've been promising this to you guys for a while and I thank you for being patient with me. So I am cuddled up here on my couch with my nice big snuggly blanket so that I can film this hopefully in not too many different segments because I cannot stand myself on camera. So I struggle um, when I film things like this and my face is looking at you guys. So I'll do the best that I can. But um, the Vermiculture Conference was an absolutely amazing time. Um, it was the second week in November and I went down, I drove actually from Maryland and I guess I left on a Thursday and I just made a long weekend of it. The conference itself was uh, Saturday and Sunday and then I came home on Monday. But the people that I met, uh, the different speakers that I heard, um, just kind of solidified why exactly I do this. I mean, I obviously do this because I love it and I'm passionate about it, but learning even more in depth about the benefits that uh, compost has for our planet, for our plants, for our gardens, for our immune system, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. So Rhonda Sherman, uh, I'm going to look at my notes, so you have to forgive me. Um, she is I'm trying to look at her official title. She's the director of the compost learning lab at um, NC State, North Carolina State. And um, I believe she's been in that capacity for quite some time. Um, she wrote an article, I want to say it was back in the 90s, about worms eating garbage. And it created a lot of, of interest. And she kind of uh, morphed into this... Um, world-renowned speaker and um, specialist and expert in her field of vermiculture. So she has helped um, NC State transition to um, nearly a waste-free um, campus, which is absolutely amazing. And she has the Compost Learning Lab, which we got to visit. Um, and it has all sorts of different systems from the stackable worm factory systems to continuous flow through, like large scale systems as well. Um, I'll put a few pictures uh, along here as I go. Um, but she spoke at the conference, but she had some incredible other speakers as well. Um, Norman Arancon, who is this incredible scientist studying the uses of uh, vermicompost. And um, there was the self-made millionaire who, um, I think his name was Mark, if I remember correctly, um, he spoke about how he basically started from nothing and ended up um, turning into this huge, huge supplier of vermicompost. Um, then there were other speakers like Steve Churchill, the developer of the Urban Worm Bag, uh, Heather Rinaldi, which is, um, she's a microbiologist. She has a Texas worm ranch down in Texas, and um, but she specializes in a lot of the microbiology of it um, and how we can kind of specify the type of compost we make based on the inputs and basically what makes a good compost. She spoke a lot about that, which was also really fascinating. But at this conference, they also kind of headlined this new book that Rhonda Sherman wrote, which um, features some big um, vermicomposting um, operations here in the United States and, and beyond. She traveled to most of these places and interviewed and took pictures and it's a really cool book. Um, it's really well written. Anybody can uh, read it, understand it, and um, no, I'm, I'm not a large-scale uh, vermicomposter, but I definitely took a lot away from her book as well. So um, I got an extra one of these. It is signed. If I can find the signature page. This is my copy, but I also have um, another copy that I wanted to give away to one of you guys. So um, make sure you comment below because I will be choosing a winner of that book based on people commenting. So um, I hope one of you, I can get this mailed out to you here real soon. But I'm going to cut the camera off for a second so I can take a look at my notes and I will give you some of the more... Um, nitty-gritty details about the conference and some of the things that I learned while I was there. All right, so I was trying to look through all of my notes and organize things in my mind, and this is going to be a tricky thing to do, so I think I'm going to read 
somewhat off of um, some of my notes and kind of discuss some of the things that stuck out to me as being the most um, interesting and some of the biggest takeaways. And the, the first um, person who spoke, who was also the last person I believe who spoke, was um, Norman Arancon. And uh, he is a PhD out of the University of Hawaii Hilo. Um, and he does some incredible research on the use of compost, compost teas and extracts and what effect it has on plants as far as their growth, um, suppression of bugs, um, and pretty much all capacities of what the benefit could be. He's kind of looking into it, the microbial biomass and, and how much of an effect that makes on uh, our plants. So. The one thing that I learned that was big, and it sounds silly, but I never really thought about it and I didn't recognize the difference, was that um, the word dirt and soil should not be used interchangeably. So dirt, they basically said dirt, think of dirt as devoid of life. Yeah, there might be a little bit of life in that dirt, but it's not going to be doing much benefit for us. So the average person's backyard is probably mostly dirt either because of, you know, development and it hasn't had a long time to build up the nutrients and the mic like the microbes and all those good things or because we continuously treat our soil, that's our dirt, our land with chemical fertilizers which keep killing off anything that starts to come up. So, it sounds simple to me, it was like a big deal. I was like, "Oh, that makes sense. I've always used the words interchangeably and they're just not the same." Um, but let me see here. I, it says one teaspoon of, um, soil should have 100 million to 1 billion microbes and bacteria in it. And most of the soils, um, in the United States don't have even a percentage of that. Um, it talked a lot about using, um, GMOs and how they can actually, the way that they're modified, affect the, um, the the biomass and can be toxic to those microbes, therefore kind of killing off some of the benefits that they have. Um, I also found it, it um, pretty mind-boggling that um, in, in some of the herbicides that are used commonly now, like um, I guess like the Weed Be Gones and the Roundups, things like that, um, a compound that was in Agent Orange, and I hope most of us know what that was, um, that, you know, is deadly, is used. And that's what we're spraying on our lawns and in our gardens to kill off weeds. Um, that was just, that just blew my mind. Um, but the biggest thing is, is thinking about the soil as a web. And I always hear this expression, the soil web, and I have a really great understanding of it now. Norman spoke a lot about the soil web, but it didn't completely make sense to me until he described it like a spider web. So if we think about, um, you know, a spider up in the corner of our house and it builds this beautiful web, you know, between the, the corners and it's, you know, the gorgeous, gorgeous, you know, beautiful makeup. And even if we hate spiders, there's something very beautiful and symmetrical about how a web is made. And he said the benefit of that, that spider web is that when a bug flies into it, it has so many little filaments that catch it, and then the spider is able to go down and have his dinner. And he said, what if you take that same spider web and you go and you poke a hole through it? So you poke a hole through the spider web, and then when the moth flies in to the spider web, it misses the web and goes through the hole. And now that spider's missed his dinner. And for some reason, again, it seems like a kind of simple concept, but I didn't really have an idea of what that meant, but basically it's kind of supporting the idea of a no-till method of gardening and treating our lawns and things like that because every time we're digging into the soil, we're breaking up this beautiful balance of microbes and bacteria that are making the soil healthy and therefore we're decreasing their ability to take up nutrients and give us healthier plants, healthier lawns, things like that. So I hope that made sense, and I might not have all of these facts perfect. I'm doing the best that I can based on my notes, um, and I'll try to um, 
make any corrections if I was wrong down, down below. There was so much information and so little time to jot it all down. Um, let me see. So basically the more microbes you have in a greater surface area, you're increasing the nutrient availability for those microbes. And that's what we want. We want to get the soil aggregates, I believe is what they referred to it as. We want to um, kind of help those build up in the soil because all of those things are what benefit our plants. When we treat with chemicals, when we till it all up, we constantly are breaking up these aggregates that work together um, to take care of our soil. So we know that worms are a, good, a sign of a healthy soil because worms aren't going to live if there's nothing for them to eat. And we know that worms eat microbes. They don't actually eat the food itself. They feed on the microbes and the bacteria that are eating the food that we put in our bins. So could we add worms to, to, to dirt and fix the land? Probably not, because there's not going to be enough for them um, to live off of there, and they can't fix it all on their own. That's why we need to introduce, you know, the healthy bacteria and the healthy soils and compost, things like that, and then let that land be, because then the worms will come, and then the worms will stay. But if we expect to just throw compost on, but then treat with weed killer or some sort of chemical fertilizer, we're kind of negating everything that we just did. So again, I, I hope I'm doing that justice. But basically we just, we want tons of bacteria, we want tons of fungi and all of those um, things are not bad. We hear the word bacteria and people don't realize that there's good and bad bacteria. And what seems to be really beautiful about compost from what I understand is that the bacteria work together and the good guys and the bad guys, they kind of all balance each other out. So um, having bacteria, having um, things that, that we might not necessarily think are, are good are actually okay because if we get rid of all of one thing, there can be such thing as too much of a good thing or too much of a bad thing. So we need a little bit of the good and a little bit of the bad to kind of balance each other out. And that kind of goes to the whole concept of the ecosystem. So that's pretty much um, how, how I, I took it. And it kind of made me think about my fear of the bugs in my worm bins. And they are all working so perfectly together. And if we wait long enough, if we're patient enough, the, all, all of the problems will regulate themselves out. Of course, if it's something that we're causing, we might need to do a little intervention. But in general, Mother Nature does a perfect job of finding that balance and bringing herself back to homeostasis. That's the nurse in me. It's the best word I can think of to, to describe it. Um, but it's just absolutely fascinating how all of this works. And, um, you know, we talked about different, uh, nematodes and how there's, you know, predatory nematodes and parasitic nematodes and, and how, again, it's not bad to have any of them really, it's just the balance of it. Um, but I also found it interesting that inse insects can be controlled using vermicompost. Um, it looks like from what I wrote here, chewing insects, sucking insects, mealybugs, aphids, cucumber beetles, hornworms. Um, it seemed like in general, like a 20 to 40% compost um, to, to like potting soil. Uh, was kind of like the ideal sweet spot in helping the plants to defend um, against some of these these bugs. I didn't realize that that was even a thing that compost could affect the bugs and the number of bugs or bugs that we don't have in our gardens. And the thing that was really beneficial, I thought, was that it had no negative effects on pollinating uh, insects. So it's like it gets rid of those bad guys, but it doesn't affect the good guys. So it'll kind of, you know, scoot those aphids off somewhere else, but they won't be sitting there eating on your vegetable garden. So that was a ton and that was just like one speaker. So I think I will end up doing this in a couple of different 
uh, segments. So this will be episode one or whatever you want to call it. Um, but this will be part one of probably a three or four part um, recap. But the other amazing thing is that the conference wasn't just about listening to speakers. It was eight hours, uh, two days. So, you know, basically a nine to five, both, both days, but it was so engaging. I'd never felt bored. I never felt like it was above my head. And during the breaks, you know, we were sitting there talking to people at our table and finding out that, oh, you know, this guy's really into compost tea. And he taught me all about compost tea. And I met this awesome woman who has a, um, big CFT and sells compost down in North Carolina. And she sat with me one day and we had an excellent time. I um, roomed with a woman from Washington who I'd never met in person before, but we had all of these these opportunities to meet and talk with one another. We had um, a meetup each evening at uh, a bar where everybody would just have dinner and talk and network and, and learn from one another. And I have to say that these are some of the most kind people that I've ever met. They're just so generous with their time and sharing, you know, the quote unquote secrets uh, of the trade. Nobody feels like they, they weren't trying to hold anything back. Everybody was just, you know, openly sharing all of their ideas. And that was something that I thought was absolutely amazing. And I know is not the same in, you know, all fields. So this is episode one, guys. I'm not going to let it get any longer. So let me know what you think so far. Any questions you have moving forward, um, please like this video. Let me know if this has been beneficial. And I will be back in a couple of days and we will do episode two.